Welcome all to our lovers. My name is Linda. This, this is Winston. Winston and I are here to help you and your chihuahua live the best life ever together. Aren't we, baby? Yeah, that's what we're here for. If you want to know more about me and what qualifies me to help you with your chihuahua, I'll put a link to my about page in the description below. Go ahead, check it out. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not, then welcome back. If you are a subscriber, I wanna take just a minute to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all the wonderful comments that I've gotten, asking if we're okay, when I'm gonna put up a new video. I appreciate it so much. And yes, we're all just fine. I simply had to take a mental health break. If any of you have ever worked from home, then you may understand it's so hard to keep a balance between, between your personal obligations and your obliga work obligations. It's so hard to keep a balance. There's so much to do, um, keeping up with your chihuahuas, making sure they're healthy, making sure they've had enough exercise and playtime laundry, you know, all of that together with what you're obligated to do in your work. So it's, it's not easy to keep that balance and I just simply needed a mental health break. But I'm back and I am so excited to be back and I have lots of really awesome videos in the works for just you. So let's get to the real reason that we're here. Are you ready, Winston? Are you ready to answer some questions? So first of all, before I get started, if you are a subscriber or if you've been here before, then you know at the beginning of each video, I usually have one of my chihuahuas with me, like Winston. People know that I have one named Remedy and they never see Remedy. And people have asked me why, if, if she's okay. So I'll just tell you, Remedy is not comfortable with the camera. You see, Winston, he's just as relaxed as can be. He said he was nervous, but he's really not. But Remedy, on the other hand, she is not comfortable at all in front of the camera. When she sees the camera, sees me coming with the camera or my phone, she literally stops what she's doing and runs to the dog door and goes outside. So she's just not comfortable. And I could spend the time condition training her to make her comfortable in front of the camera, but why? I have so much to do, as I'd already mentioned. We don't have time for that. And I have three that are perfectly willing and capable. So now let's get to your burning questions. Winston, you ready to get down? Say bye to everybody. Bye, Winston. Say bye. Okay, question number one. Billy, Billy Joe asks, I rescued a 10 month old Chi that is only aggressive when you tell him no or Kevin, that's bad. He goes insane and attacks. I'm assuming this is a fear aggression. How do I make him understand I will not hurt him? Usually to change a behavior, you need to know why or what started that behavior in the first place. When a, with a rescued chihuahua, however, that's difficult to do. You really, they have experience, have had experiences before they came to you that you know nothing about. So that's a difficult thing to do when you have a rescue. So I suggest that instead of the word no, you use another word or just use a sound like uh -uh, something like that instead of the word no. But remember to use that only when you don't want him to do something, when you want him to stop right now, whatever he's doing. And the other thing is dogs don't understand sentences like Kevin, that's bad. Kevin has no idea what you're saying. And it might be the word bad that he is reacting to. So if you need to use the word bad, replace it with another word because apparently he associates that word with something very unpleasant that has happened to him in the past. Good luck. I hope that helped. Okay, question number two. Linda Leaner, not sure I'm pronouncing that right. If I'm not, I apologize. 
She asks, just curious, what dog food do you feed your dogs? Well, Linda, I get asked this question all the time and I'm happy to answer it. The answer is I feed my dogs my own homemade recipe. However, I do not recommend that you or most people do that unless you have a good understanding of canine nutrition and the science behind it. I have spent years researching and studying canine nutrition, so I feel very confident that what I'm feeding my dogs is what they need. They're getting all the nutrients they need. They are getting it in the right balance. They're getting the right amount of protein, carbohydrates, healthy fats, and all in the right balance. All of these come into play if you want your dog to be healthy. Many well-meaning people feed their dogs their own recipes. And while I commend them for wanting their dogs to be healthy and for trying to do their best to make sure that they're healthy, I think what they don't understand is that although creating a recipe is not rocket science, it is science. And there is a science behind canine nutrition. And so I really don't recommend that because you could be doing just the opposite of what you intended to do. Instead of making them healthy, they could be malnourished. Or did you know, for instance, that vitamin D, too much vitamin D, can cause kidney failure? Yeah, I realize that it would take a bunch of vitamin D to do that, but it gives you the idea of why you have to be so careful about feeding your dog your own dog food, your own recipe. But with that being said, I also do not recommend kibble or manufactured dog food. So what's a dog mom or dad to do? Well, I will put a link in the description below to a uh, fresh food diet that I recommend and it's what I fed my dogs before. While I was learning canine nutrition, this is what I fed my dogs. And I'll put the link to that in the description below and you can get 50% off. If however, you don't even wanna do that, then my next suggestion is the next best thing, freeze dried dog food. Because freeze dried is not overly processed. It's not cooked at very high temperatures, which really just depletes the whole dog food of any nutrients whatsoever. So they have to spray them back on at the end of the processing. So, but with freeze dried dog food, they don't do that. It's cooked at a much lower temperature and then freeze dried. So freeze dried, I would suggest that rather than manufactured kibble or dog food. So question number three, Brooklyn, I'm not even going to try Brooklyn's last name because I am not good at pronouncing people's names. But Brooklyn asks, are older chihuahuas still able to be trained? Ah, oh, the old cool, the old age old question. Can you teach an old dog new tricks? The answer is yes. Yes, you can teach an old dog new tricks. Just like people, however, when dogs get older, it's more difficult. They start feeling the pain of their joints and, and they may not be quite as sharp as when they're younger. So it does, you can do it, but it takes time. It may take longer and a lot more patience than it would with a younger dog. So just keep that in mind, consistency and patience. But yes, you can teach an old dog new tricks. So question number four, Rachel Leach asks, do you happen to have a Facebook Chihuahua page that I can send my pictures of all four of my Chihuahuas? The answer is yes, I do. And I'll put a link to it in the description below. The issue is I have a hard time with Facebook because at one time I had over 25,000 subscribers to my Facebook page and they shut it down. They completely shut it down without any explanation to me whatsoever. There's no way to get a hold of anybody to find out why or what I can do to have them reinstate it. So I had to start all over again with zero subscribers. So you won't find many subscribers on there and 
I also don't spend a lot of time anymore on Facebook because I feel like what's the what's the use if they can just shut it down whenever they want for any reason whatever because all I had on that Facebook page was pictures of chihuahuas mostly my chihuahuas so I don't understand what in the world I did that caused them to shut it down so but there you have there's the there's the answer I do have but I don't spend a lot of time there also you can check out my Pinterest page um, I'll put a link to that in the description below also. Okay, question number five. Ah, I can't pronounce that at all. But this person asks, have you ever noticed a chihuahua get more aggressive over time? I have a two-year-old chihuahua and he's the sweetest thing, but I've been slowly noticing more that he'll growl or be grumpy when he's sleeping now. Well, the older that chihuahuas get the more new things they experience and that they are exposed to so sometimes without us even realizing it they can develop a fear of certain people things objects and without you even realizing that that's what's happening and if it only happens when he's sleeping i really wouldn't worry about it He's probably dreaming about having to protect you <laughs> from some vicious animal. It may be a good idea to have him checked out by a veterinarian to make sure that, that he's not in any kind of pain or something like that. But I really couldn't give you a, a firm answer to that question. Question number six. Chris asks, my chihuahua is six months old. She is 95% housebroken. She lately started peeing in the kitchen when I'm not home. She knows she's not supposed to, but she still does it. Is she acting out? Is she acting out? Well, you know, you remember if you ever watched um, Beverly Hills Chihuahua, remember Chloe who took a bite of her canned dog food and put it in Rachel's shoe because she didn't like, didn't think she should have to eat canned dog food. Do you remember that? Yeah, that's fantasy. Dogs don't act out like that. They don't, they don't associate with, well, I'm not getting this, so I'm going to show her and do this. That's just, that's just not in them. They don't, they don't do that. So no, she's not acting out. I would say, first of all, I really don't think there's any such thing as 95% housebroken. I think you need to start from the beginning and re house break. And I know, I know that's going to be a pain in the rear end. Um, but if you want your Chihuahua to be 100% house trained for the rest of their entire life, I'm afraid that's what you really need to do is go back from the beginning, start over again and um, taking her out every two hours, making sure she's not out in the, in the uh, free out in the house, you know, make up a pen or a crate or something. Don't leave her in there all day long, but you know, every two hours or so, take them out to pot, take her out to potty, spend some play time with her, etc. Just don't let her out roaming the house when you can't supervise her. That is my suggestion. Also, to completely house train a dog, it can take up to six months or more for your chihuahua to be completely house trained. And the mistake that a lot of people make is they, you know, they, your chihuahua hasn't done anything, hasn't peed or pooped in the house in a week or so, so you think they're trained. And so you stop the house training. And that is the way most people mistake that's the mistake that most people make, I think, is you you have to spend the time. And six months, yeah, that sounds terribly, like a terribly long time, and it's a pain in the rear to train them. But some dogs take less time, sometimes take a little more time. But if you want, again, if you want your chihuahua to be completely house trained for their entire life, this is what you need to do. I also have a free ebook on how to house train a chihuahua and I'll put a link to that in the description below and it's a step-by-step -step how to house train your chihuahua. Okay, question number seven. 
Sunshine73 asks, what's your opinion regarding using puppy pads? That's a good question, and I've had a lot of people ask me get that before. My opinion is to use one or the other. If you intend your chihuahua to always go outside to potty, then train them that way. Don't even introduce potty pads. On the other hand, if you intend to use potty pads all the time, then don't introduce taking them outside. And the reason for that is because it's confusing to your chihuahua. You know, sometimes I can pee in the house and sometimes I can't. They don't associate that it's okay just in this spot, but not okay over here. They don't associate that and it can be confusing. Now, I know that there are people who have done that, that there are people who their chihuahuas go outside and then they use potty pads on rainy days or snowy days and it's worked for them. That's great. But I'm just telling you that most of the time that doesn't work because it's confusing. Your dog just doesn't understand or associate the difference. And in the book I mentioned, um, my free ebook on how to house train a chihuahua, I um, explain that in more depth and teach you how to house train, how to house train your dog to potty pads if that's what you prefer to do. Okay, question number eight. JHG asks, what can I feed my chihuahua that is obese and always hungry? And there's another good question that I get a lot. I know when the that when I worked at a veterinary hospital, I saw so many really seriously overweight, obese chihuahuas, and I felt so sad for them because it's just not healthy. I, I don't know what else to say, except it's just so not healthy and it shortens their lifespan. It shortens their lifespan sometimes a lot. But I also know how difficult it is. I mean, those big brown or big black eyes looking at you and begging you for treats, how can you resist that? I understand that too. But I also wanna give you something to think about. How do you know that your dog is hungry? Say your dog is hungry, he wants to eat all the time. The truth is dogs are programmed to hunt for food. Sometimes, well, my four chihuahuas, for instance, when they go in the kitchen, their nose is to the floor constantly. And it's not so much because they're hungry. I know they're not hungry. It's because that's their instinct to hunt for food. And they know there's food in the kitchen. So they're going to walk around with their noses to the floor all the time, hunting for anything that you might have dropped. So the fact that they do that doesn't necessarily mean that your chihuahua is hungry. Just keep that in mind too. Second of all, it's not so much what you feed them, but of course how much you feed them. And that includes treats. Sometimes people forget that when you give them treats during the day, you need to deduct that from their meals for that day. That, you know, as close to as you can think. Um, that amount. Suppose the treats have 30 calories, the ones that you fed them that day, then you need to lower the food intake for your dog by 30 calories or so. And I, you, you basically have to guess that, but you do need to deduct that. Keep that in mind that when you feed them treats, you need to lower their meals for that day. Helping a chihuahua to lose weight is a process. And my other suggestion is to always weigh your food. However, um, and so don't, don't rely on a measuring cup. I have a video that I'm gonna put up soon that will show you exactly how to measure your dog food or, or to weigh your dog food. What you need to do is to use a kitchen scale and weigh the dog food. But even then, if you use kibble, each little kibble nugget, they're never always the exact same size. And one kibble can be, you know, the amount of calories that one kibble has over another can be anywhere from 10 to 100 calories difference. So it's difficult. I realize that. And that is why I have started a one-on-one -on -one weight loss program. I'll put a link to that in the description below. And I'm also working on a 
course on how to help your chihuahua to lose weight. And it'll be a step-by-step, -step, show you everything you need to know, how to know whether or not they're, they're getting the right calories, how much calories your chihuahua needs, because it differs from dog to dog, from chihuahua to chihuahua. Um, and so on. So all of those things you will learn in that course or now I have a one-on-one -on -one Zoom program that you can purchase for the same thing. My three rescues, Winston, Cora, and Lily all came to me severely obese and um, they are now all at their ideal weight. So I know how I do how to do it. I know what I'm doing and I can help you too, if that's what you want to do. The link is in the description below. Okay, question number nine. Random internet viewer, that's clever. Random internet viewer asks, is a chihuahua okay for a single person working nine hours a day? Well, yes, I can tell you this. Chihuahuas do very well as a pet for a single person. If you get a Chihuahua and they will be in a crate for nine hours a day, then no. My answer is a adamant no. You cannot do that. You cannot put a dog in a crate or a kennel for nine hours a day. It just is, that's cruel and inhumane. Uh, using a crate is not, but putting them in there and keeping them in there for nine days or nine hours a day, that's cruel. Don't do that. So what I suggest is if they're completely potty trained, get a, a dog door so they can go in and out of the house and do their business anytime they need to. Make sure they have plenty of toys and things to keep them occupied. Chihuahuas need something to do, otherwise they'll tear things up. So make sure they have plenty of toys to play with. I suggest giving them a Kong that is filled with um, healthy food that you know they're not going to choke on. You don't want to leave them with a, anything that they could possibly choke on and then leave them. So be very careful about that. But a Kong that is stuffed with healthy foods, I sometimes fill them with yogurt and peanut butter and stuff like that and then freeze it. And then it takes them a long time to get all of that out and it keeps them occupied for a long time. That's a suggestion. Or if you can't do any of those things, then I suggest you um, get the help of a friend, a family member, a neighbor, someone who can spend the time to come over and uh, make sure they go outside, make sure they have some play time and spend some time with a person during the day. That's another suggestion if you have to work. Chihuahuas do very well as a single person, as a pet for a single person. So question number 10, LA Hall asks, how often should a chihuahua get a dental cleaning? Chihuahuas are very prone to teeth issues. And the reason for that is they have the same number of teeth as any other dog breed. That's 42 teeth. If they all come in, they have 42 teeth. All those 42 teeth are crammed into a tiny little mouth. And that doesn't leave a lot of room for bone to grow. And it does make for a great breeding ground for bacteria that causes periodontal disease. So it is very important that you make sure that they, that you take good care of their teeth. Brush them three times a week if you can. I realize that for many people that's nearly impossible. But most of all, have them... Um, make sure that they get a professional dental cleaning at least once a year. But for chihuahuas, you really should do it every six months. Make sure they get a good dental cleaning. Two of my three rescues, as you know, came to me and obviously their teeth had not been well taken care of. And so they don't have a lot of teeth left. And so Lily and Winston, both their tongues stick out because if they're if they no longer have their canine teeth, there's nothing to hold their tongues in. So that's the reason you see a lot of chihuahuas with their tongues hanging out, is that they've lost too many teeth. So it is important. I know having their little tongues stick out is cute, but it's not 
ideal. I've also got some videos up on how to condition train your Chihuahua to brush their teeth. And I have a video that you can watch that I, where I recorded Cora getting her teeth professionally cleaned by a veterinarian. I recorded the whole thing and you can watch that. So you can see what happens when they get their teeth cleaned at a veterinarian clinic or hospital. Yes, a professional cleaning can be expensive, but it's not as expensive as the health issues that, that periodontal disease can cause. It can even cause heart issues and so on. So, you know, if you weigh the pros and cons, then it's really less expensive to do that than it is to take care of the problems that it caused later. Also, here's a tip, call around because veterinarians charge different prices. For instance, generally, a dental cleaning can cost anywhere from $300 all the way up to $3,000. So it depends on what vet you take them to. Like for instance, if you live in a big city, veterinarians there generally charge a lot more than if you live in a smaller town. So call around, even if you have to call uh, little cities that surround your big city, call around and get estimates. And um, that way you can get a lesser price than you generally can in a bigger city. So there's a tip for today. So that's all the time I have for this video. And that's 10 questions. Thank you so much for watching and for being patient with me and waiting for this video. I also am going to periodically do a answer your questions video. So if you have a question you'd like me to answer on video, then please submit it or just add it to the comments below because I do look at those. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you'll be notified when I upload my next video. But until then, thank you for watching. And my Fab Four and I wish you many, many happy tail wags and lots and lots of sloppy chihuahua kisses. Until next time, bye.